So let's outline some properties of the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform takes a function of t and gives out a function of omega, which we'll denote with a capital F. We'll also denote that with capital F bracket the function. So the definition of the Fourier transform is 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative infinity to infinity, of your function times e to the negative i omega t dt. Now the last video introduced the important Fourier relations. And if I were going to list that on this table, I would write it this way. The integral from negative infinity to infinity of the Fourier transform times e to the positive i omega t d omega. If that's the starting function, which is a function of t because you integrate away the omega, then the Fourier transform would just be f of omega again. So that's the Fourier relations. We've also seen the relationship between the Laplace transform and the Fourier transform. So if I have a unit step function here, times a function f of t, then if I take the Fourier transform, it turns out to be 1 over 2 pi, the Laplace transform of your function, except when you take the Laplace transform, you take s to be i omega. So that's the connection with the Laplace transform. Since we've already discovered a lot of Laplace transforms earlier in our course, the Laplace transform table, for example, uh, you can use that information to take the Fourier transform of functions of this type. It also obeys the usual linearity property. So C times a function plus another function. That, taking the Fourier transform, can be split into parts this way. That's a linearity property. Then there's shifting theorems, like a shifting theorem number one, analog, shifting theorem number two. I'm going to leave those for you to look up on the table of Fourier transforms on our website. But to end this video, I'd like to highlight two more important Fourier transforms, that of derivatives. So if I have the derivative of a function and I take the Fourier transform with respect to t, you may notice that in this definition here, I get an extra omega t. So this is my f of t, you know, that's the Fourier relations. So if I take the derivative, I get an extra i omega that comes out in front, meaning this would be i omega times the Fourier transform. Of course, that implies that the second derivative would be i omega squared times your Fourier transform. In other words, negative omega squared times the Fourier transform of your function. So I encourage you to look at the table of Fourier transforms for an extended list here, but I thought I'd just go over a few of the basic properties of Fourier transforms. What we're going to do to finish up the course in our next video is use these last two properties here to take Fourier transforms of some partial differential equations. In fact, we'll look at the heat equation again and solve it using these properties of the Fourier transform. All right, please follow me along there.